Recording? All right, I just had this epiphany. I gotta share this with you. I'm out of breath because I just got down from a ladder trimming these huge shrubs. And this crazy thing is when I, when the sun is beating on you and you're dripping in sweat and you're like in a state of pain, just forcing yourself through it, that's when these epiphanies come to me. Pain equals inspiration and that's why it's important to get out of your comfort zone. But this is my first commercial property that fired me. Huge learning lesson. It took me all these years and it just hit me just now, excuse me, that I've been wrong all this time. I just literally just slammed an entire Gatorade in like two seconds. Okay. You are very fond and you're so thankful and you have so much gratitude for those customers that hired you in the beginning when you were getting your business off the ground. You're so thankful that they gave you a chance when they could have hired somebody else. Because of them, you were able to get your bills paid and you were able to get your business off the ground, right? No, 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 no. It was because of you. It was because of your work ethic and your due diligence and your tenacity that you got your business off the ground, not them. Here was my epiphany. My first commercial property fired me after I think I was there two or three years. I was there every week cutting the lawn, weed whipping, edging, putting preen down in the beds, pulling all the weeds, trimming all the shrubs, trimming all the trees, cleaning all the windows. My prices were so incredibly low that after all expenses, I think I was only making like $140 for the entire year. And I was traveling four cities away and four cities back because I was so excited and I felt like I was a success because I got my first commercial property. The bill for the entire year was like $1,450 that included putting mulch down. I was taking the price of mulch and adding $15 an hour for myself. I wasn't adding in any expense. I couldn't afford taxes and insurance and work comp and payroll and none of that stuff. So in retrospect, I was probably losing about $15,000 a year going in the negative and opportunity cost by literally doing this property for free, going there every single week. Um, now, didn't I just say a couple minutes ago that I was so incredibly thankful for that client who gave me a chance, who was so nice to me? All these years, I've always thought about that client and wondered what happened to that person. I'm like, man, I want to give that client a call. I really think these thoughts. This is interesting. I want to give that customer a call. Say, you know, it's, I know that you don't really care, but I'm your old landscaper and I want to let you know that my business worked out and I became successful and I have hundreds of clients now and everything finally worked out. We got a house and all these things and, and I want to say thank you so much for giving me that opportunity when I first started. And I know this is a random out of the blue phone call. I actually, do you ever like go around like thinking of this crap in your head, like telling yourself stories when you have moments of gratitude and just genuinely thank this customer for giving me a chance. You know why that commercial property fired me? Because they said on the phone, they felt like I was uh, to be fair, they sold and they had new ownership who reviewed the contract and everything that I was doing. They fired me because they said they felt like I was taking advantage of them and they didn't see or understand how they were paying me $1,450 for the entire year when all I was doing was maintenancing. Uh, it was a whole condo complex. It had like 20 units, a commercial property off of a main road how just cutting the lawn and edging the garden beds and trimming all the shrubs and trimming all the trees and putting down preen and pulling all the weeds and laying down mulch and doing about, I don't know, at least 10 grand worth of work per year. How they didn't understand how that was costing them $1,400 and they felt like I was taking, and, and, and they felt like I was ripping them off. So they fired me. I was so crushed back then. I'm gonna get back to what I wanna really say to the client in a second. I was so crushed when that happened. I was, I was hurt emotionally. I was like, this is so unfair. I'm killing myself. I'm going out here. Put, I put my heart and soul into that property. I could literally tear up right now. I was so proud of myself. I put my heart and soul into that property. I tried so hard and I made it look beautiful. I remember when the tenants would come outside 
and they would come out and they would compliment me and they say, oh my God, I've never seen somebody take so much attention to detail to this property. I love the way that you edge everything and go over every fine detail in line. And I said, it's because I'm so thankful and I'm so passionate and I want to make this look beautiful. I treat this property like it's my own. And then when they fired me, I was like, dude, I'm only making like $140 for the entire year. Here's where the epiphany came. My buddy, uh, Danny Fopp, he owns a, a sprinkler company. Real cool guy. I was on the phone venting to him about what I'm telling you a few years ago. And he goes, wait a second. You're all stressed out about this, Keith, but let me ask you a question. How much revenue and annual revenue do you actually do for this client? I said, well, about $1,450. He says, what? Why are we even having this conversation? You should have fired them a long time ago, just got rid of them. We do clients that, that spend $22,000 a year with us. If you had a client spending fifteen dollars to $22,000 a year, then you should be maybe a little stressful about making that client happy. And if they're firing you, that's a part of a chunk of your, your annual revenue. You're complaining about $1,450 and they're ripping you off? I was like, boom, mind blown. How much revenue does each client bring you on a yearly basis? Now you should bend over backwards for your customers and do a beautiful job and care and have passion to take care of them, treat their properties, properties like it's your own. You really care, you're, you're in the service business. You should, should have an attitude of service and genuinely care. So it reflects in everything that you do. But how much revenue is each client bringing you? after all the headache and frustration and the callbacks and every little thing that you do for them. You know, I, was on the, I called another buddy here where I live. He's got like a, a million dollar landscape business and I call him once a year maybe for some quick mentorship. And he said something interesting to me. He's been in the business going on 30 years now. He said that his focus that he learned a long time ago is really seeking to sift out and find the really good clients and build an amazing clientele. The perfect clientele for you. So what I really want to do is I want to call back that customer and say, hey, uh, I know that you remember me. This is Keith Kelfus. And uh, I want to say uh, all that work I did on the property back in the day for you. Uh, I'm not thanking, I'm not thankful. I want to say thank you for taking advantage of me. You know, like even now that I say it, it sounds wrong. Like it doesn't make a right. Man, I had so much anger, but after I talked it all out, cause I was angry. I'm like, I was legitimately before I made this video, I was literally about to call that customer randomly out of the blue say, Hey, this is Kelfish. Yeah. You took advantage of me. You knew exactly what you're doing. This is the part that you might not see. If you're in your first or second year of your business and you're not like a savant, if you don't understand why you're getting all these nitpicky customers that are cheap and taking advantage of you, you're not making any money, it's because these customers are smart. They know exactly who they're hiring. They were looking for you. They were looking for the chuck in a truck. First guy, guy just getting started with rust all over his pickup truck who uh, wasn't licensed or insured, who had the cheapest price possible. You get in where you fit in. They were looking for you. They were looking for you. They purposely called you instead of the big company at the top page of Google with the hundreds of positive reviews and all the lettered trucks with all the DOT numbers because they knew that they're going to pay four or five times the amount of price and they don't want to pay that. They hired the cheapest guy because it was you and you weren't even aware that you were, you're projecting that before you even thought of it. You've been projecting that. So what are you projecting? Cause what you put out is what you're going to get back. You know, Stanley genetics told me to say what you put out is what you're going to get back. I've, lo I've walked like three blocks away from the job site now. This is awesome. There's people probably staring out their windows at me. Say, What's that guy doing? He must be famous. Maybe in landscaping. All right, so. I think for just an experiment, 
I'm actually gonna call that customer and tell them that, uh, hey, thank you for taking advantage of me. <laughs> All, so what I mean is your brain, you've been telling yourself a lot of lies. Why would you be incredibly thankful for a whole bunch of people who are, who are purposely trying to take advantage of you? This is like, what's that? Is it Stockholm Syndrome? There's one client specific, I'm not saying any names, who literally took advantage of me so bad that I probably, I probably took five years off my lifespan stressing out being this client's total bitch for a long time. And you know what? Uh, the old rule, I won't go too far into this, is called let him be deceived who would be deceived. Cycle that in your head a few times. It'd be like the old Roman law. Let he be deceived who would be deceived. So that's what's casuistry. Casuistry is when, uh, look it up on Wikipedia or the dictionary. It's when you're twisting things to your own formats and your own rules. You're, you're creating a carefully woven lie. In that type of thinking, if somebody would be deceived by you, if they're not smart enough and they don't have the wisdom to govern themselves and govern their own boundaries and their own business, their own pricing, their, and, and if they let you bulldoze them and totally take advantage of them a hundred times until forever, then let he be deceived who would be deceived. If he will let you take advantage of him, that's his bad, not yours. And in the world of business, which is a first stage adversarial exchange, what I mean by that is uh, business is primarily adversarial. Your customers and your clients, like, It's kind of like you can say whatever you want to say as long as you have a smile on your face, correct? Absolutely. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> so, I think you got the point. <laughs>